measurement of the standard electrode potential. To measure the electrode potential of any electrode, actually we need a reference electrode. So we take the reference electrode uh, and then to compare the electrode potential of other electrodes, we connect it with the reference electrode. And the reference electrode that we take here is a standard hydrogen electrode. This standard hydrogen electrode is our reference electrode and then we connect this reference electrode with other electrodes to know their electrode potentials. So that means the electrode potential that we uh, actually see in the textbooks is actually the relative electrode potential, right? That is the relative electrode potential because we related actually with the hydrogen electrode because hydrogen is taken as a reference electrode. And here the hydrogen electrode is prepared by passing the hydrogen gas at the atmo one atmospheric pressure through a one molar HCl solution, right? One molar, we have a one molar hydrochloric acid and we pass the hydrogen gas at one atmospheric uh, pressure through this solution. And then, you know, to make the electric electrical uh, connectivity with the other electrodes, we, we use the platinum electrode here. We have a platinum. The platinum is very much inert. Uh, so that's why we use this one. It doesn't react with most of the acids and the chemicals. So that's why we use this electrode over here, the platinum, to make the electrical connectivity with the other electrodes. So suppose I want to know the electrode potential of the zinc electrode. So how can I measure the electrode potential of a zinc? So as I said, to measure the electrode potential of a zinc, we need to connect this electrode with the reference electrode. And the reference electrode is standard hydrogen electrode. So we connect the standard hydrogen electrode with the zinc electrode. We have a zinc rod. We pass it. This, you know, we insert the zinc rod in a one molar zinc sulfur solution. Now we got the zinc electrode over here and you connect it with the hydrogen electrode, the reference electrode. And then, you know, we, we complete the circuit by inserting the solder bridge. And we use the voltmeter over here that tells us about the voltage or you can the EMF of the cell. So now from this uh, system, you know, what we find, we find that the electrons are actually flowing from the zinc towards the, the uh, hydrogen electrode. So which means that zinc is an anode because it undergoes oxidation, it loses the electrons and the electrode where oxidation takes place is called as anode. So in this case, it is the zinc which acts as an anode. So hydrogen which gains electrons acts as a cathode. So in this system, hydrogen is a cathode because it gains electrons and the electrode where, you know, reduction takes place, which takes electrons is a cathode. So the actual reaction in this case is the zinc will lose electrons. So zinc changes to the zinc ions and the electrons. So the solution, in the solution you see that the zinc ion concentration will increase and the electrons, they start flowing through this wire, they move towards the uh, hydrogen electrode, which is the reference. And hydrogen ions from the solution, the H plus ions from the solution, they actually take those electrons, they accept the electrons and form the hydrogen gas, right? So you get, we have two hydrogens, two electrons, and you get the hydrogen gas. So that means uh, in this system, zinc loses electrons, so acts as an anode. The hydrogen, the reference electrode gains electrons, so it acts as a cathode. And we know that the EMF of a cell, the electromotive force, EMF of the cell is actually equal to the oxidation potential of anode plus the reduction potential of the cathode, right? EMF of a cell, you know, this galvanic cell that, that you get here, its EMF will be equal to the oxidation potential of anode plus the reduction potential of a cathode. And the voltmeter here, you can see that the reading tells us the uh, the EMF of the cell is, you know, about 0.76. So EMF of a cell is 0.76. The oxidation potential of the anode, the anode here is zinc. So we have to find that oxidation potential of the zinc. We have to find the reduction potential of the cathode. Hydrogen is a, you know, reference electrode, right? And for a reference electrode, we take its uh, electrode potential as zero, right? So its electrode potential by convention is taken as zero. So whether oxidation, oxidation takes place or reduction takes place at the hydrogen, at the reference electrode, we take its electrode potential as zero. That is by convention, right? So we can say the reduction potential of the hydrogen here is zero. So which means that 
the oxidation potential of the zinc will be equal to the 0 0.76 volts. So this is the oxidation potential of a zinc. So that means to, to know the electrode potential of any electrode, we need to connect that electrode with the reference electrode and from that galvanic cell, you know that you get after connecting that particular electrode with the reference electrode, the, uh, you know, the voltage, the EMF will tell us the oxidation potential or the reduction potential of that particular electrode. So you can see here, zinc with respect to the hydrogen, you know, if you see here, zinc, uh, once you connect it with the hydrogen electrode, which means that the zinc loses electron. Zinc has higher tendency to lose electron as compared to the hydrogen. So hydrogen relatively has a higher tendency to gain that electron uh, than the zinc. Now, let's suppose you connect the, uh, the, you know, the copper electrode with the hydrogen electrode, right? So you want to know the electrode potential of the copper over here. So again, we have to connect that copper electrode with the reference electrode. And this one, you know, this, uh, uh, the galvanic cell that you get after connecting the reference electrode with the hydrogen electrode, it tells us the voltage of the cell here is 0 0.34, right? 0 0.34 and the, you know, the flow of electrons is actually from the hydrogen to the copper, right? And if, suppose if this is the direction of the current from the copper to the uh, hydrogen, that means the flow of electrons will be opposite to that, right? The direction of the current and the direction of the electrons are in opposite directions, right? Now, as I said over here, in this case, you can see that the electrons are flowing from the hydrogen to the copper. So that means the hydrogen now, uh, you know, it loses the electrons, means oxidation takes place over here. So the electrode where oxidation takes place, we know it's called as anode. So that means in this case, it is the hydrogen which acts as an anode. And the copper, which gains electrons, right? It gains electrons because hydrogen loses electrons and those electrons are gained by the copper electrode. So that means copper undergoes reduction. So therefore, this is a cathode. So copper acts as a cathode now over here. So the actual reaction you can see here is the copper, you know, suppose we have a hydrogen here, the hydrogen which is a, a, as an anode. So hydrogen actually dissociates into the H plus ions and electrons. So that means hydrogen ion concentration now starts increasing in the solution. The electrons start flowing through this wire, through this platinum electrode. They move towards the copper electrode and the copper ions from the solution actually gain those electrons. So copper ions from the solution gains those electrons which are lost by the hydrogen form with the copper here, the solid uh, copper here. And therefore, you know, this one acts as a cathode and this one is a anode. Now again, as I said, the EMF of a cell, electromotive force of a cell is basically the oxidation potential of the anode plus the reduction potential of a cathode. So we can say the EMF of a cell, you can see from this reading, the EMF of a cell is 0 0.34 volts. So this is 0 0.34, which is equal to the oxidation potential of the hydrogen. You know, hydrogen is the anode here. And we know that by convention, we take it as a reference. Uh, you know, we take it as zero. The reduction potential of the cathode here is the copper. You know, copper is the cathode here. So I can say 0 0.34 will be equal to hydrogen is a reference electrode. So whether oxidation takes place at it or reduction takes place, its electrode potential is taken as zero by convention, right? So you can say this one is zero. So plus reduction potential of the copper. So which means that you can see that the reduction potential of a copper, the tendency to gain the electron of the copper is actually 0 0.34 volts, right? So this is the reduction potential of the copper. So that's how we calculate, that's how we measure the electrode potential of any electrode by connecting it with the reference electrode. And the reference electrode we take is the hydrogen electrode. So by connecting the different electrodes with the reference electro electrode, which is the hydrogen electrode, right? We can find the values of the electrode potential of, for the different electrodes. Just like we, you know, we found here the electrode potential of the zinc and we found the electrode potential of the copper here. So then we can arrange those electrodes, right? You can arrange those electrodes uh, in the increasing order of their reduction potentials or you can see the decreasing order of their oxidation potentials. And then, you know, the series that you get by arranging those electrodes is called as an electrochemical series. So you can see here, it is the zinc, you know, that has a 
very low reduction potential you can see the minus 0 point you know it says that is 0 0.76 you know it is negative 0 0.7628 and the copper has a you know, reduction potential of about 0 0.337 right and the hydrogen by convention is taken as zero the reference is taken as zero so which means that you can connect you can find the different you know uh, the, the different values of the uh, electrode potentials and then you can arrange them uh, in the increasing order of their reduction potentials or you can say the decreasing order of their oxidation potentials and one more important point here is you can see you know in the previous in the in the previous slide we we, we saw that the oxidation potential we learned that there that the oxidation potential of the zinc is about 0 0.76 but you can see here something negative right this is because you know we can find we can we can actually convert the oxidation potential of an electrode into this reduction potential right we can convert an oxidation potential of an electrode into this reduction potential by changing the sign suppose you know you know the oxidation potential of of the zinc so the oxidation potential of the zinc is 0 0.76 that is the oxidation potential now uh, so you can convert you can find you can find from this value you can say the reduction potential of the zinc you know if i want to write down the reduction potential of the zinc what will be the tendency to gain you know this is the tendency to lose the electron right this is the tendency to lose the you know to lose the electron so to lose the electron you know oxidation potential of the zinc is very high but i can say that the reduction potential of the zinc will be low correct a metal that has a high tendency to lose the electron i can say that this metal has a very low reduction potential it has a very low tendency to gain the electron a metal that has high tendency to lose electron a metal that wants to remove you know lose the electron will have a very low tendency to gain the electron so that means the reduction potential of the zinc i can write down simply the negative 0 0.76 simply by changing the sign means by changing the sign we can convert oxidation potential into reduction potential and reduction potential into oxidation potentials so in this series in the electrochemical series the values you see here then something you know in the in the negative values here right you see here the negative values this is because we have actually uh, converted the oxidation potentials of those electrodes you know which are over here which are over here these electrodes we have converted their oxidation potential into the reduction potentials and this in this series actually we have arranged the electrodes in the order of their you know the increasing uh, reduction potential so this is the reduction potential basically correct means that we can convert we can change uh, oxidation potential into this reduction potential simply by changing the sign right changing the sign so suppose you have a metal if it is oxidation potential is let's say it is you know 1.01 .01 volts right this is the oxidation potential volts this is the oxidation potential so i can say for the same metal i can say the reduction potential of that metal will be negative 1.01 .01 volts so changing the sign will change the oxidation potential into reduction potential and reduction potential back into the oxidation potential hope you got it thanks for watching the video bye for now